How's it going guys, and welcome to the devious world of man-made horrors beyond your wildest comprehension. Spore. Today we are going to do something very few have done. We will be attempting to use the funny Play-Doh evolution game to simulate some semblance of real evolution. And hoping our sanity holds while we fight for our life against the endless horrors of depraved biological abomination. All the following footage was streamed on my Twitch. Check it out at twitch.tv slash vastcarter. I stream three days a week, and I stream a variety of content. Be sure to check it out. A revolution in evolution begins how you might expect. Hurtling through the vacuum of space on a mission to mock fuck impact the one planet in the system that happens to have water on it. We find ourselves as a single-celled amoeba on an alien world in a foreign environment. If we're going to survive in this new aquatic environment, we will need to adapt to the many ecological challenges we have yet to face. Would our fledgling species survive and possibly thrive? Or would it fade into the history, as so many others once did? We are alone in this watery puddle. No one is going to help us. We find ourselves challenged on all sides, either to be outcompeted or to be lunch. But things would begin to change after thousands of years of barely holding out. We would finally obtain enough arbitrary points in order to adapt our species. In order to reduce future scarcity, we opted to make our amoeba omnivorous, as well as adapting the number of tails, flagella, I think they're called, and the color scheme to better fit the environment the creature finds itself in. This new revolutionary creature would thus be dubbed the Silly Bilious. Now that we have a fully adapted creature, it was time to fight the uphill battle to the top of the food chain. To do this, we would need to play into uh, an ecological niche. In Spore, there are three broad categories that play a factor into the body parts you can use later in the creature stage, depending on how you behave in the cell stage, i.e. if you behave like a bloodthirsty psychopath in the cell stage, then you are relegated to only have access to carno components in the creature stage, and vice versa. This is important, because we want to obtain omnivorous parts in the creature stage, so we will need to behave accordingly in order to fill out our ecological niche. Due to our past evolution in eating exclusively plants, we would need to offset this by eating a meat-based diet for a good chunk of the cell phages. So... With more genetic ammunition, we now have enough for a new evolution. Previously, we had some slight issues with our speed, being unable to catch certain creatures. We would remedy this by turning our city little creature into a fucking race car. Oh yeah? Your primordial creature from the far distant past is faster? Well mine has fucking spikes, and goes fast, so get fucked idiot. Moving up in the food chain has come with its advantages, and outstandingly horrendous disadvantages. Mainly the ramping up of cellular horrors beyond my comprehension. These weird little blue fellas, for example, that, like, hide, or born, or manifest, I don't fucking know. Either way, they appear out of these rock things and they haunt my fucking dreams, and I hate them. After spending a few million years feasting on those less fortunate, and avoiding those little blue devils, I, I don't fucking know what they are. We decided to get one final evolution in before our prophesized emergence to the land world. The evolution was big. It was ginormous. It was the most important evolution of them all. It was... FISH! The time has come. Eating our final bit of grass, we have done it. We flexed really, really hard, and instead of cell shit, we grew a brain! And without ultra-significant evolutionary development, we decided it was time to go on to land. What would we find? What horrors await us upon emerging to the surface of this unknown world? 